Welcome to Inspirational Women. This week we speak to eclectic Dr. Kanita Dramat about the healing powers of traditional Chinese medicine. Next, we head to the legal cafe in Salt River to chat to highly driven civil engineer and attorney Rania Carr about her sterling relief work with disadvantaged women. Lastly, we're in sunny Warme State and we chat to attorney, community activist, and supermom Shamima Sali about the importance of balance. Let's hear from Najwa Muhammad Ladi and Abida Dixon Muhammad about these inspirational women. Assalamu alaikum, hello and hartlik welkom by Inspirational Women. Ek is Abida Dixon Muhammad. Vandag keir ek by Dr. Konita Dramat. En ja, sy is een dokter, maar jy weet, haar dokterstoor is een stilank in my mond. So ek ga my vir haar sê, vrou, om te sê, wat sy type dokter is sy is. Salam alaikum, dokter Kolita. Oh, alaikum salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukra so much for having me and welcome to my home as well. Uh, basically, in terms of the doctor, the long word, it's, uh, it's called the doctor of Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Okay. okay, so basically um, in terms of what it entails, mm. um, it's acupuncture yes. and then we also basically do cupping as well. Um, and alongside your cupping and your acupuncture, we would have Chinese herbal medicine, mm. okay, that we would obviously um, give to a patient whenever they would come for a consultation. Okay, now for me, I've never done cupping. I've never done it. I've never done it. What is that now? Yes, okay. So cupping is basically an ancient form of healing, right? It translates probably 4,000 years back um, in terms of going back into history. So obviously we know according to the Islamic uh, religion, mm -hmm. um, Islam, it is part of um, the practices of the Prophet wasallam. Yeah. So during his time, um, he used to practice cupping and that oh. is why we as Muslims today um, inculcated within our, our, our daily life mm -hmm. um, as a sunnah, as one of his practices um, according to the Prophet wasallam. So when you come into the technical aspect mm. of cupping, it's basically um, ball-shaped cups, which I'll show you later on in the program. Mm. Um, it's um, these ball-shaped cups you place onto the body. Mm. Um, it creates a suction wow. of the skin, mm. and then it enhances blood movement, circulation, and it also helps in terms of detoxing the body. So it's quite great in terms of, you know, um, getting rid of toxicity, getting rid of acidity in the body um, and it also helps in in terms of regulating normal functioning of every organ in the body mm. yeah so that that, that can come down for me that a mess is my bias sick fun but in our vietnamese yes. is that it? absolutely <laughs> absolutely and that is the thing eh? when you look at a symptom normally when we get a headache or a migraine or a, a, a foot pain for instance mm. right mm. Um, that is only the time that we would take cognizance of what's happening to our body but on a normal basis when we find we feel fine mm. there's nothing going on and and it gives us that impression that we're okay yes. right but it's only when we get the symptom mm. that is when we would go and seek help or take a tablet mm. for instance but in terms of cupping it helps to keep you healthy on a daily basis okay. remember that when we step out of our homes we're exposed to toxicity we're exposed to pollution uh, traffic you know um, carbon monoxide fumes etc from um, um, daily um, uh, 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 factors or yeah. environmental factors that we're exposed to mm. even water sometimes oh. you know has a, a, a role to play okay. so um, in terms of toxicity it's really really important um, to get rid of that in terms of detoxing whether um, a lot of people do detoxing um, you know when it especially come to Ramadan mm. right we would do the fasting as a form mm. of detoxing um, when it comes to maybe the slimming diet summer <laughs> then we all tend to want to go on our detoxes mm. but when it comes to cupping um, because it's a sunnah and a practice of the Prophet wasalam, it's always ideal for one to do it like on a monthly basis or every second month just to help the body cope you know with that extra stress and strain what's very important to note also is one major factor in our lives today is stress and one would never ever think that stress causes toxicity mm. but it does it does it's one of the major impacts in terms of health concerns today it causes blood pressure 
you know, it causes um, conditions like strokes or heart attacks. So for one, to control those things, mm -hmm. cupping is one of your solutions. Now, as we talk about cupping, I come say that today I come for cupping, now I come maybe over a month again. Would I say the cupping again to do, or is it now again it's another? But yet it's fun cupping. Okay, uh, so it depends, eh? and it's different from patient to patient. Remember, um, initially when a patient comes for a consultation, we sit down with mm -hmm. that patient. So there's a set of questions that we go through, 10 basic questions that we would ask a patient. We would check the pulse, we would have a look at your tongue as well. So that indicates to us as to what's happening inside the body. Mm. So from there, I would be able to advise you, okay? Cupping is ideal for you, or acupuncture is ideal for your situation or your body type, mm -hmm. you know, or your body temperament. So, in that case, um, when it comes to cupping, um, yes, it'll certainly help in terms of detoxing the body and it will help with your particular ailment. Mm -hmm. Or when it comes to acupuncture, it'll help in terms of regulating the central nervous system, you know, people with anxiety, muscle tension, aches and pains, arthritis. Mm. So we'll be able to obviously ascertain when a patient comes into the surgery as to what is the ideal treatment for them. Okay. Now, as I begin with cupping, I begin with my own so I know my diet is not for eating habits, but they don't know for 100%. Mm. Um, you know, there's a prophetic saying that goes, um, you know, all diseases, the, the, the stomach is the root of all diseases, you know. So ultimately, when you look at diet, it's crucial. Mm. Um, if you look at our Cape Malay diets, mm. right? Our curries and our biryanis yes. and our dal cheese and, and our kusisters. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you know, all of those things, when consumed in um, in 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 big amounts, you know, it it has an impact on the body. Um, that's why we always advocate, you know, um, have things in moderation. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Even when you look at sugar, you know, it's highly consumed nowadays. So that has a huge impact on your central nervous system. It has a huge impact on your on your kidneys, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it has a huge impact on the heart as well. You know, all the fatty, greasy foods that we have in mm -hmm. our diets, it has an impact in terms of cholesterol, you know. So with that, we always want to try and give the best possible care to the patient yes. whenever they walk through that door um, and you try to obviously give them a good dietary plan according okay. to their condition. Sure. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but, but now, doctor, as we we have not said that we have vitamins and we have to be sick, but we have to be sick. But now we have to come back there, then we have pain, then we have to go to doctor, to hospital, and then we come back to me. I get this with the sickness, and then you can't believe it. Yes. So how is it possible that the medicine there all the years no one is after coming? Yeah, you see, our our um, bodies are are designed in such a beautiful way, mm -hmm. you know, um, in terms of how Allah created His creation okay, at the yeah. end of the day. So um, your body is able to withstand so many stresses. You know, you got many people that has emotional problems, that has stress in their home, stress at work, etc. So that in itself, you. You know impacts on the body but your body has like a um, regulation system mm -hmm. you know in terms of our immune system that's one way to look at it yeah. in, ter in terms of how we're able to um, cope with stresses with our central nervous system mm -hmm. that's another way to look at it so your body has innate um, abilities to withstand all of these trials and tribulations and stresses mm -hmm. but when the body cannot cope any longer mm -hmm. that's when the symptoms come you know, that's when that headache or migraine come, or the, the numbness in the left arm, you know, and you can't feel, you know, the shortness of breath occurs, mm -hmm. and eventually it results in a stroke, or it results in a heart attack, etc. So it's always good for one to prevent those things, mm -hmm. and um, through going to a, a natural medical practitioner or a Chinese um, um, medical practitioner, mm -hmm. they will certainly help you, mm -hmm. you know, to cope with the daily stresses, give you exercises to do, breathing exercises, mm -hmm. and, and, and dietary recommendations as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So ons twee snackies thuis en een kopje zwart koffie. Right. Wat is die klaag eet vir die dag? Is right. do I do I any harm to my body? You see, your body needs fuel. Yes. Right, just like a car needs petrol, okay. so does the body need fuel. <laughs> it's so important mm. in order for you to drive, in order okay. for you to, 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 to move in life, you know, to, to um, achieve your goals, your aspirations, etc. And for the mind, you know, to, to develop and yes. to grow and, and, and for one to, to, you know, spark ideas, etc, mm. etc. So fuel is extremely important. So the fuel for the body mm. is that meal. You know, there's a lot of um, different diets that you get nowadays um, on the market, you know. In terms of diet, I'm, I'm not saying like trying to lose weight mm. diet, mm. but more eating plans. Okay. There we go. So you get um, different types of eating plans for different people. Yes. So in our, um, the, in the natural world, you call it different temperaments, mm. right? So when a patient comes into the door, you'd be able to see, okay, according to pulse, according to tongue, that is the type of temperament that you would have. Mm. Okay, so it's in Chinese medicine, we look at the uh, body mm. in terms of yin, Mm. and young. Okay. okay, I don't know if you've seen mm. that round circle. Mm -hmm. um, um, the one side is shaded black yeah. with a white dot in it okay. and the other side is shaded um, white with a black dot in it. Okay. So that basically symbolizes um, harmony in terms of the body and in terms of nature mm. as well. So within yin there's yang yeah. and within yang there's yin. Mm. Right, so that is like an entire philosophy mm. that you study at university mm. to really understand, mm. right? But when it comes to the body and you come to a Chinese medical practitioner, mm. that's how we would look at you, okay? okay. So, um, for example, if somebody is very um, energetic, mm. you know, they're up and about and they um, they got so much energy, but it's causing them not to sleep at night, mm. you know, they've got insomnia, they maybe have dry mouth during the day, excessive urination, etc. Right? Then we would say they've got excess young, they've got too much energy in the body. Whereas if somebody's lethargic, tired all the time, yes. you know, they just want to sleep, mm -hmm. then it's excess yin, mm -hmm. too much moisture okay. in the body. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you know very well to listen to what Dr. Khan has to us now to tell us. Because I must say, I have a lot of good things to learn from you, what I have learned. But this doctor is going to be with us, and we'll have a few tricks to try. En ik heb nou zo lekker gezellig met dokter Cornette en zij gepraat van vragen wat zij wil vragen en gepraat van die tong. Zo, ik heb het lekker mooi verstaan, maar zij me nou voor mij een keer meer verduidelijk. No problem. Dokter Cornette, yeah. nou die questions wat je dan voor die mensen dan vraagt, wat soort type mm. questions is het nou eindelijk? Oké, okay. so basically when a, a patient comes to, uh, or comes for a consultation, um, there's a specific set of questions that we would ask them to understand actually what's going on inside the body. Okay. Okay, so amongst those questions would be like, do you feel more cold than hot or more hot than cold? Um, do you sweat a lot? Mm -hmm. um, do you have a lot of pain? Where's the pain situated? Is it localized? Mm -hmm. Does it radiate? Um, we ask, especially when it comes to women, yes. menstruation, yeah. because that is pivotal and very important when mm -hmm. you look at the menstrual cycle, also depending on the age that the person is when they come in for okay. a consultation. Um, also, we would um, look at the the patient's medical history. Yes. We look at the family history as well. Um, with the medical history that indicates as to um, what medication mm -hmm. the patient is on and if we go forward with treatment and herbal medicine there's no drug interaction mm -hmm. when it comes to them being on western mm -hmm. medication and as a Chinese herbal medicine um, practitioner yes. uh, we're putting on putting them on herbs okay. um, and making sure that there's no drug interactions. Okay. Okay. Now, as, uh, yes. as you person dealt now with the herbal gebruik, any gewone uh, medicine yes. or pillen, shall yes. it clash? Um, it depends. Okay, okay it depends. Um, a typical example would be a lot of people are on um, blood thinners, yes. for instance. Right, so they would take it for um, certain conditions and they need to take maybe every day mm. these blood thinners. So there are certain uh, natural medications 
patient okay. that are also blood thinners mm. as well. Like for example, you look at your turmeric. Mm. It's a blood thinner. Okay. Right. So when it comes to a patient being on Western medication, that's a blood thinner, and you put them on a herbal medicine, mm. then obviously there is the incidence of the blood becoming too thin mm. and the patient may be um, just scraping the arm or bruising the arm and bleeding occurs. Mm. You know, so um, in that instance, the patient wouldn't know what's going on um, and therefore taking simple herbal medication um, with your Western medicine can can make things much more worse. Sure. Yeah, sure. so it's very very important for one to always go to a certified um, natural medical practitioner or Chinese herbal uh -huh. uh, medical doctor so that they can do a consultation with them, do a thorough medical history, mm -hmm. um, and then look at the way forward. Okay, but then also then what means about biochemical and herbal? Yes. Then they believe maybe as I know, the herbal is the how to get the best of the So that rust is a problem. Yes. Okay, it depends, okay. right. So if somebody is a chronic patient, mm. right, so you've been a chronic diabetic or yes. hypertensive sufferer or, or sufferer, sorry, um, or you've uh, had chronic uh, cholesterol for a long period of time, mm. then obviously your body is so used to taking Western medication. Yes. Right, so um, a lot of people are under the idea that you know what I'm fed up mm. of Western medicine so let me just go the more natural route and they can just stop the medication completely but remember depending on the type of medicines you are mm. your body will also also go through withdrawal sy symptoms yes okay so it's a really really important for one to always be supervised and looked over mm. um, in terms of going to you know a, a, a doctor oh. um, that is qualified um, to help you make the best choice Okay. and tell you, okay, so we're weaning you off from this particular Western medication mm. and we're introducing natural medicine. All right, for that, you know, it's going to do it. Yeah, always, always have guidance All because, right. you know, we go to university, we mm. study for five years, yes. you know, it's, it's not like it's... It, it, we're doing all of these things for mm. nothing. We're being taught oh, you know, all of these things, yeah, the rules, regulations, okay. when it comes to medicine. Oh, right. Now, last thing, so, you don't have to talk about tong. What is yes. it about tong? Okay, so remember when um, one visits a Chinese medical practitioner, yes. um, they would check your pulse, Yes. okay, and then also have a look at your tongue mm. as well. So on the pulse, um, every organ is situated on your pulse mm. as well, and then on the tongue, the same thing happens. Mm. So you're able to understand according to, for example, the tongue, the coating of the tongue, uh, the color of the tongue. Mm. Um, you're able to look at the moisture, whether it's dry, whether it's moist, etc. And that would give you as a practitioner understanding whether the patient has Remember we spoke about yin and yang, yeah, yeah. so whether the patient has a yin deficiency mm. or yang deficiency okay. and what type of symptoms yes. the patient is experiencing. So um, you'll be able to even ascertain by feeling the pulse mm. and having a look at the tongue okay. whether the patient has excess heat in mm -hmm. the body mm. or um, excess moisture in okay. the body. All right. Well, on severe and by a sugar and half a doctor cornita, so I can't answer it. Says a slow my second, but now can say how a bikin alder and make us for my set. And also, as you can see, I can open a bit, and Dr. Kwan is going to be in the middle of the day, and I can do it as well. Now, Dr. Kwan, what do you mean to do this as you do this? Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate to you, because it's your first time. Yes, yes. Okay, when it comes to, um, you know, acupuncture, yeah. um, it's very fine needles that mm. we insert into the body okay. on specific points, right? Mm. So remember, with these fine needles, it's not like your normal doctor's needle, yes, you know, yes. when you get an injection. Uh. It's as thin as a hair strand. Okay. okay. And all the needles are sterilized, mm. right? So basically, we get them packaged. Um, as you can see there, it's pre-packed, mm -hmm. so it comes from the company like that, yeah. and they, they've never ever been used, so okay. um, it's perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. right. All right. right. So that should put your um, at mind ease. at ease. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to use basic points on yeah. you, okay? Um, with the points, especially when it comes to the face mm. area, you know, um, 
looking at acupuncture, mm. you get different forms of acupuncture as yes. well. So this would be um, similar to like your dry needling, mm -hmm. um, where if you, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with going to a physiotherapist as well. Mm. So then they would do dry needling, which is a bit more superficial okay. compared to your acupuncture. Oh, acupuncture yeah. would be much more deeper mm. into the into the muscle mm. um, layer, etc. Then you also get a different form of acupuncture called electroacupuncture, where we would basically put, for instance, um, if people has urinary incontinence, incontinence right, yes. where you've got constant leaking of urine, etc., um, then we would put certain points on the stomach area, mm. all right, and then we would apply electrodes. Or, or place electrodes onto the needle. <clears throat> Sorry. So then it will continuously stimulate the needle mm -hmm. and help in terms of lifting, for example, the bladder okay. um, and helping with the condition. Um, so for me to, to start off your acupuncture session, mm -hmm. we're just going to do the basic points on the face area. Okay. And those would be used for like maybe anxiety or if you're stressed, you know. Um, and also a lot of people nowadays are experiencing um, sinus conditions, especially, you know, um, with the weather changes, etc. Mm. So we'll be able to demonstrate to you that as well. Okay. Okay. Mm. So the first point I'm going to... Um, introduced to you it's called yin tongue mm -hmm. so this point is just basically between the eyebrows all right um, and it's a, a point in terms of stimulating the mi mind but it also helps to calm the spirit we call it shen okay. in chinese medicine so it calms the mind it calms the spirit okay um, and it also helps for anxiety as well all right so you can just close your eyes, that's good, and then you breathe, breathe in for me, and you breathe out. That's perfect, that is it. It wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. So that was the, the one um, point that we would use. Then we would use Tai Yang. So Tai Yang you can also use for patients who has headaches and migraines. Mm. So it's more on the temple area mm -hmm. okay so basically just where my finger is mm -hmm. okay you'll feel this little bit of indentation here mm -hmm. okay so we'll place the needle into um, the skin at that area All right so you'll breathe in for me again and then you'll breathe out that's good so you're doing well so far right. and then we'll put whatever we do on the right hand side we'll yeah. do on the left hand side okay. as well mm -hmm. all right okay with acupuncture we also work with meridians right so it's not me just choosing a point eeny meeny miny mo right there's specific meridians that we would work with mm. or channels and these are the points mm. that are located on those meridians for those specific aforementioned um ailments or illnesses that I said. All right, okay. so now we'll be doing the one for sinusitis. Okay. Just get a needle for you. There we go. Okay, so with this one, it seems maybe a little bit sensitive mm. because it's, it's just at the tip of the nose. Okay. Okay, so you're going to breathe in for me again. Bismillah. And then you're going to breathe out. That's it. And one more to go. Okay. Breathe in for me. And you breathe out. That's good. Okay. And how is that for you? Was it now that I know Yes. <laughs> It's still there. <laughs> okay. It's still there. But now, what, what marked it now in, like, no, in my face now? Okay, so remember with um, uh, acupuncture, right? Mm. We work on meridians. Mm. So in that meridian, it's believed to have um, something called chi, mm. which is um, in English, you can translate it in energy. Mm. And then obviously your blood, your blood circulation. So with um, us inserting a needle into that particular point, it helps in activating that chi. Okay. Okay. So it helps in activating that energy. So if somebody has chronic sinusitis, mm. there's constant blockage okay. in the nose. So with the 
activation of those particular points mm. it helps to unblock those small little blockages that you've got and it enhances movement in the area okay. so you should be able to breathe much better if you somebody for instance with a tying mm. um, um, points somebody that suffers from severe migraines or headaches mm -hmm. it's supposed to help to 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 decrease okay. that severity of the All headaches. Right. Now, doctor, can I get up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> doctor, can I get up? I'm like, 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Inspirational Woman. I am Najwa Mohammed Ladi and today we are at the Market Delhi in Salt River. I am going to chat to another inspirational woman. She is a civil engineer by profession. She loves the youth and she's also an MD of her own company. Um, Sister Rania Ka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Rania. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Najwa, and, and to the viewers out there. Yes, yeah, shukran for having us. It's a pleasure. Um, you look 16 years old, so. If only. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, you're the MD of your own company, mashallah. Civil engineer by profession. Born and raised in Hanover Park, notorious Hanover Park on the Cape Flats. Mm -hmm. Rania, how was that? being raised in Hanover Park? I think going back, well, I moved out of the area when I was nine years old. Okay. And really because I think my mom having ra been raising five girls right. and one boy just had enough. And, yes. and I think she didn't want to expose her girls to mm -hmm. what happens in Hanover Park. And then she just decided one day, this is it. I need to give my girls and my children yes. a, better li a better lifestyle. Um, and then, Coming from a Nova Park, it keeps you grounded. Um, a lot of people get shocked to hear when I say I do come from a Nova yes, Park. Yes, I know. <laughs> but I always tell them that should not um, label you. Yeah. I mean, really, people label you a Nova Park. Oh, you're unsuccessful. And right. it should really just give you that foundation and yes. that motivation to improve yourself. Yes. So yes. your question was why civil engineering? Right. We were on a school tour and to a sewage plant of all places <laughs> and I, I was just intrigued. And then from there, I think I was in standard nine, which is grade 11 nowadays, if I have to do the numbers. And I just did my, my, my homework and some background and then I applied. And my dad at the time, who was in the clothing industry, said, what on earth do you want to do in a man's Civil, world? Exactly. Civil engineering, <laughs> I think he had this perception his daughter's going to do clothing designing or something because I'm still a girly girl. Of course, and I you can that. say you're a girly girl. <laughs> and, and, and I think that's important to retain your femininity, right. um, especially in a man's world. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then from there onwards, I studied civil engineering and my career evolved over the years and I ended up in project management. That's my other question. <laughs> MD of a project management business. Why the shift? The shift came really because I was thrown in the deep end. I was um, in corporate for many years right. and for about almost 18 years mm -hmm. and then I got retrenched. And then you sit back and you take stock and I'm someone that can't keep idle and then I decided okay let's give this a shot mm -hmm. and I think thinking back I started in 2011 okay thinking like I should have actually done it a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> so that means you're basically very happy in what you're doing at the I moment. love what I'm doing um, right. and I think what I'm doing is not just focusing on project management mm -hmm. I integrate a whole lot of components into yes. into my career yes. and, and I don't just label it as project management. Mm -hmm. I'm extens extensively involved in um, non-profit organization Correct. work, um, community work and the projects that I also undertake within my business also complements that. Okay. Um, so I'm involved with a lot of housing and housing actually is a um, very sensitive topic nowadays and it gives back to the community. Yes, yes, yes. So my non-profit work is um, I'm very much involved with the South African Academy for Young Leaders okay. and we founded with, with two other partners in 2009 mm -hmm. and um, we basically teach 
leadership skills yeah. to the youngsters out there. Yeah. And I mean, coming from a Nova Park, you know, there are lots of kids, not just within a Nova Park, but I think in lots of underprivileged areas that need mentors. Yes. I mean, basically their mentors are the Shabeen owners, the drug lords and that. And they look up to these individuals and think they are successful. Right. But there are many other careers you can go into and, and make a success. Mm. And Rania, being um, executive member of so many NGOs, I think, um, what, what are the criteria, you know, what is needed to see if that youth fit your criteria? I don't think you need criteria. I think any human being can plow back. And if all of us can plow back, I think um, we'll have so much more, so many more people yes. in, in society. So, I mean, we have youngsters um, from the tender age of nine years old that I can remember that started out with us. And today they are 16, 17 years old and some of them university. I mean, if I think back how we started with the South African Academy of Young Leaders, we had to look at logistics, getting these youth there because they were so eager to, to give back. And then all of a sudden now they're pulling up with their own vehicles and oh, now they can assist us. So oh. that growth is, is, is so great to see. Yes. Um, so I don't think you need criteria or a um, varsity degree or anything to give back to community. I think everyone, no matter how young they are, should, right. should give back. Um, I think as parents, as mentors, we should teach our children mm -hmm. to actually give back to community in small ways. And it starts out small and yes. it can grow phenomenally. So those um, youth that came through all the ranks, you know, being part mm -hmm. of your NGOs, I'm sure they're giving back now being part of the NGO as well. Yes, with the South African Academy for Young Leaders, we've grown significantly over the years. Yes. We've got almost 4,000 youth on our database. Wow. Um, so you've got those who come just for the day or yes. the two, but we have those that really started with, with us since 2009 mm -hmm. and is still involved. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we go into the schools, we go into the communities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we go into the, the other non-profit organizations we partner with and also with, within the market daily space. Yes. And I think yes. that's why we started it. Because, you know, to fund a non-profit organization is really taxing. It takes a lot of personal funding mm -hmm. and the donor market has really gone down because of economic challenges over okay. the last couple of years. And myself and my two other partners, we decided to start a business to sustain the non-profit organizations. Yes. And hence, uh, we're shooting here today at the yes, Market Delhi. Yes. So the market and we Delhi, <laughs> we just totally So the amazed. Market Delhi in itself sustains not just the South African Academy for Young Leaders, it sustains our feeding scheme that we run oh. from here. So we don't just run a feeding scheme. Um, during the month of the winter months. Mm -hmm. We actually run it throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Access to Justice program, which is called the Legal Cafe. And it's really giving legal guidance to the community, community out there. You know, to go see a lawyer is it's very, very, costly, very, expensive. very expensive. So you, you literally give a donation and you get access to a lawyer for about 30 minutes on a Saturday morning. And exactly the same type of advice that you'd get anywhere else because you have professional yeah. lawyers on professional role. volunteers that comes in on a saturday oh, morning wow. they give up their time mm -hmm. and literally do pro bono work, pro bono work yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's between 10 30 and and say 1 30 and then we have a single mom's project okay. and wow. that's actually a spin-off project from our south african academy for young leaders mm -hmm. because a lot of these kids are being reared by single parents Correct. Correct. and a lot of these single parents don't have jobs so we see how we can either find a placement assist them in any way that we can but for them to be able to earn an income mm -hmm. ethically mm -hmm. and um yeah Amazing, amazing. <laughs> so really, it's about always just giving back. And you have to give back. I think you've, you know, I know you're a civil engineer by profession, you're an MD of your company, but you're very passionate about the youth because I they am. are leaders, our future I leaders. Am. And you know, it also goes back to my, my nieces and nephews. Correct. There's 10 of them and um, they really just, yeah, you keep in touch with them, you have to keep in touch with the youth. Keeps you young at heart as well. <laughs> That's why you look 16, <laughs> hey? If only. <laughs> Keeps you young. And yeah, and, and you need to be a mentor. And, you have to. and I mean, a mentor doesn't ask for any age. Correct. You can have a mentor that's 16 years old, that's 80 years old. I mean, my mom is 85 and she's one of my key mentors in my wow, life. Wow, 85. 85 and still alive and kicking alhamdulillah. Mashallah. 
But yeah, I mean, you you need to select your mentors strategically. I think I think your mentors also changes as you evolve over the Correct. years, and you to you need to attract people in your life yes. that can um, add some positivity benefit. and, and yeah. benefit, not benefit in the sense, but compliment, complimenting and and enhance your lifestyle. Correct, correct. I think I think benefits again can be skewed. <laughs> <laughs> Rania, I'm I'm very honoured to be here. You know, having this interview and thank you very much for really bringing us into your world. Your inspirational message to the world out there, in particular the youth. I think to the youth is really. Um, don't allow your where you come from to determine um, to to let me let me rephrase that. Don't allow your your circumstances, your circumstances really. or your disadvantage upbringing yes. really to determine where you're heading to. Exactly. You are really the driver of your destiny. Of your and take advantage of every opportunity out there. There's mm -hmm. lots of opportunities yes. for youth, especially out there nowadays, that, that's created by government. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speak to people, network, I think that's Very. important. Yeah. And and to the women out there, the young women, support one another, support one another's businesses, I think to, to everyone, no matter if it's a small household business, yes. someone yes. that's baking or cooking, yes. I mean, support that business because you don't know where that business can be in 10 years time. Absolutely. I mean, Rania, thank you very, very much. You know, it's, it's really an honor to be here. And I think it's an a inspirational story of note. May Almighty Allah just preserve you for many years. Inshallah. Continue um, doing the good that you do. And the youth must benefit from that. So thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a wrap from our team here with Sister Rania Carr. And I just also want to um, reiterate the fact that the past cannot be changed like Sister Rania said but your future is yet in your power. From myself Najwa Muhammad Ladi and Sister Rania Khan, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to another inspirational women program. My name is Najwa Muhammad Ladi and today I'm going to sit and chat to a super mom. That's right, she's young, she's a mother of five beautiful, beautiful children and her name is Sister Shamima Sali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shamima. Wa alaikum wa wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, my darling? Alhamdulillah, very happy to be here. Shukran for being here, you know, honouring us with your time because we know your time is very, very special and very, very unique because you're a mom of five beautiful kids, mashallah. And as our viewers can see, she looks very young, but we'll find out the secret about that, inshallah. Shamima, we also, I know that you're also a professional um, in terms of an advocate. You um, also a community activist, very, very active community activist, as well as a young Hajjah as well. So maybe can you just briefly give our viewers, you know, who is Shamima Sali really? <laughs> oh, that's a difficult one. Sometimes <laughs> I don't even know myself who Shamima Sali is, but alhamdulillah. Um, I come from very humble background. Yeah. Okay. And uh, at the end of the day, I have studied very hard. I've done a BPROC LLB. Yes. Um, I have done my LLB while I was uh, married. Married. Yes. With, uh, my second child on the way. Okay. I'll come and I worked for the Department of Justice for mm -hmm. about 18 years. Mm -hmm. I was a national, at the National Prosecuting Authority for nine years. Mm -hmm. and I was a family advocate for nine years. My legal field has always been in order to assist the community. I've yes. always been there to assist and support victims and to ensure that they have their rights and they mm -hmm. have their voices. <laughs> and I believe that is my passion. Yes. So have, you were the legal voice. I was the legal voice. Oh, alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah, that is my passion. I am a, well, I'm a daughter. Yes. I'm a mother. Yes. I'm a sister. Yes. I'm a mommy. Yes. I'm an aunt. <laughs> And Alhamdulillah, um, that is in a nutshell who I am. Yes, and you're also a wife there of an amazing, wife. of an amazing oh, husband. Alhamdulillah, I forget that now. <laughs> I have an absolutely, absolutely amazing husband, a very yes. supportive husband, and I'm very fortunate in that way. And yes, I'm blessed with five beautiful children. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And I'm very grateful. I think 
you know, uh, if I think of my life, mm -hmm. where I come from, mm -hmm. and my parents, um, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided me with, Correct. I am extremely honored and extremely humbled. Shamima, I think you have special powers, you know, being, and, and how do you really, this, this is really what I would like to know, how do you juggle the roles of being a mom of almost five teenagers, I must say, um, and also so active in the community, because I also know you, you, you came from Hajj not too long ago, and trying to inspire the community as well. How do you, how do you, where do you get the strength from? I believe I was born hyperactive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I just find that time is extremely precious. Yes. And I believe in utilizing your time effectively. Right. It's putting your priorities in order. That's right. You take what is most important and mm -hmm. you start with the most important factor mm -hmm. and then to those that are a little bit less right. important. And that is basically how I get through life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that I ever had a situation where um, I, you know, I couldn't do something. Yeah. I believe that if there is a will, there is a way. Yes. And you can make it happen. Yes, yes. But it is also very important the fact that I have got a support structure. I don't believe what I am doing would be possible if I did not have a support structure. And in terms of support structure, who is that support structure? I know I mention this often. Yeah. First and foremost, my parents. Alhamdulillah. They're still alive? They're still alive. Mom is 88. My dad is 86. They're very hyperactive, 88 and 86 wow. year old. Yes. Both my mom and dad are both very involved in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, they love giving all of themselves. Yes. And that is where I have learned it from. Yes. I have an absolutely wonderful father-in-law. My mother-in-law is no more alive. But my father-in-law is also a very giving and loving person. Mm -hmm. My husband is an amazing support structure. Yes. Alhamdulillah is very contented. Yes. He's very supportive. Yes. He shares my interests and he shares my goals. Yes. And he knows what I want to do and my, what I would like to achieve. Yes. And my children, yes. they are also very supportive. Yes. And if it wasn't for my family holistically, right. I would not be able to yes. be in this position. Shamima, when I, in, you know, when I introduced you, I said you were professional in terms of an advocate. People would say, you know, why don't you go out there and make lots of money, but you prefer to be a stay-at-home mom. Talk to us a little bit about that, inshallah. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of a background. Um, like I said, I studied very hard. Right. I come from humble beginnings. My mom was a dressmaker, and I believe I told you this. Yeah. There were days that there wasn't basically food on the table. Mm. My mom would start sewing mm. and the barakah would come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all right. of a sudden we would have a plate of food on the table. Right. Watching this, watching my mom struggle, watching my parents struggle, but especially my mom raising five girls and one son. Ah. Watching this happening, uh, it was my ambition to study further. Right. But I wanted to give back to the community. I didn't mm -hmm. just want to study. You know, some people say, you know, yes. I'll you the lawyers, I'll you But they don't realize that the profession is so huge that yeah. you can actually be a community worker by being in the legal field. Right. And I wanted to give back. And Alhamdulillah, after my studies, I worked for the department for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And I was in a position to give back. Mm -hmm. However, um, both with my husband and myself, we made a concerted decision. Mm -hmm. When our children would reach high school, right. one of us would end up resigning okay. in order to be there for our children. Right. I was the one who decided I would resign. But there was a lot of factors at yes. that point yes. which led me to resigning. Okay. But I think most of all, it was the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ah. That communication, we have to listen to. Yes. Because it comes in all different forms. Yes. From a situation maybe in the workplace where there was victimization happening. Right. And where for many years you were trying to assist your fellow right. colleagues. Yes. In order to uplift them, in our order to get away from that victimization. Yes. Protecting and still working for community. That was one of the factors. And then obviously the most beautiful factor. I was a creator from Hajj. Alhamdulillah. And it was all little points and push from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say to me, Shalima. I have another plan for you. Alhamdulillah. And when I, just before I went for Hajj, I already knew in my heart I was going to resign. Yes. But I went on Hajj. I came back. And the day that I came back from Hajj, 
I hand it in my resignation letter. 24 hour notice. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I still believe in doing things in the proper fashion. Okay. I know normally um, he would give a month's leave. That's right. I gave my office six months leave. Wow. Uh, but that was my, I said six months and then I'm resigning. Yes. Um, for myself to make sure that all the work that I had right. was attended to. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, at that point, I was working in the family advocate's office. Mm -hmm. Each file I had represented a child who Correct. needed me. Correct. And I couldn't leave my children. <laughs> <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, that is what led me to resigning. Right. And after the resignation, um, there's so much to do, Najwa. I know. I have worked for Dunia. Yes. I would say yes. that was my Dunia CV. Yes. For a while. For a while. <laughs> That's right. So now, alhamdulillah, I'm working for the CV for Akhira. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Shamima, any regrets? No regrets. No regrets. Absolutely no regrets. Because at the end of the day, I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. And if you trust in Allah, then nothing, nothing can put you into a situation where you believe that there is regrets. Mm -hmm. If you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners, mm -hmm. then you know with every decision you make in life or in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs you, there is a bigger plan. Absolutely. If you believe in that, then you are opening yourself up to hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. That's you. right. Shamima, tell us briefly about Shams' memoirs. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, Shams uh, is the sun. Okay. Memoirs is memories. Right. So the sun, it's bright, it's light. Yes. It's giving hope. Mm -hmm. You know, it creates. Mm -hmm. So that is where Shams' memoirs come. And also from the fact that my name is Shamima, so right. Sham and the Sali yes. is Shams, which is worked well, yes. alhamdulillah. <laughs> but Shams' memoirs, it's basically me trying to inspire and educate right. and also getting my listeners viewpoints mm -hmm. uh, on very important topics from yes. life experiences. Yes. And I think it started off with my resignation right. and my path that I wanted to follow. Yes. And then further to inspire perspective with Tamirin and Hujaj. Right. Because the reality is out there, the situation that we're sitting with, I did a lot of investigation before I went for Hajj right. and I had no idea about how much I could help Hujaj in that particular sphere. Right. You know, with regard, I mean, if you're looking at the corruption and the fraud and right. the uncertainty, the need to educate, the need to inspire, the need to help Hujaj who's been working for many, many years to Correct. save up that pennies Correct. in order to go for Hajj and Umrah. Yeah. So if in any way I means I could assist them, in assisting with the budget, yes, in assisting yes. with this, or just giving yes. guidance, or just right. being the voice out there, mm -hmm. even with Sahuk, I'm yes. a voice on Sahuk's Facebook page as You're well. You're everywhere, <laughs> alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And I think there's a, there's a real trust relationship with you and the people that really follow you. Um, Shamima, you know, our time is very, very short, but shukran so much once again. Yeah. Um, a last message from your side, in particular, you know, the educated young ladies thinking, must I take care of my kids or must I continue working? What would you say? Everybody's situation is different, not right. You have to be realistic. I supported and assisted my husband. We worked as a team at a time that we really needed to work as a team. Alhamdulillah, my husband is a professional now. Alhamdulillah. And you know what? If there's one solid good income, yes. that is fine. Because yes. that baraka is there already. Yes. You know, um, with two professionals in the home, you are now working for luxuries. Okay. That yes. is my reality. Yes, and yes. And at the end of the day, do not wait for your child to be in university or working before you say, you know what, now I want to be at home to look after my children. Right. It is too late. It is too late. I find that the, your child needs you the most in their teenage years. Mm -hmm. I can see my kids blossoming. Mm -hmm. I can see them growing. I can mm -hmm. see them being more secure in themselves right. with the decisions that I made. I know that not everybody is in that position, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Place your trust in Allah when you make that decision. Oh, that is so sweet. Shukran very much, Shamima. Um, well, that's our show for today, alhamdulillah. And I just want to say something, you know, I think we're all super moms in our own unique way. So Shamima Sali, shukran so, so much. May Almighty Allah reward you for all the good you do and keep you so fresh and young, inshallah. <laughs> it's only a pleasure. Well, from myself, Najwa Muhammad Ladi and Sister Shamima Sali, we want to wish you a beautiful, beautiful day ahead. Fi Yamanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.
That's it for this week's episode of Inspirational Women. Join us next week as we bring you more fascinating stories from inspirational women from all walks of life. And remember, it's always the right time to do something right.